So the car's all loaded. Epic adventure time. Let's go. What a beautiful morning. So that's the River Derwent and as you can see it's like glass at the moment and it's about half past five in the morning and I got here a little early, I'm meeting Oliver at six and I got here a little early because I've got a bit more setting up to do than he does. You can just see the remnants of Kirk and Priory in the background there and over just coming into centre shot there's a weir. So we're not going in that direction. There it is, kayak in the centre, and then all the rest of my gear. I'm going to be trying out some different paddling techniques. I've got a couple of different paddles with me. So I've got the traditional kayak paddles, but I found that one a bit short in this particular kayak, so I'm actually going to try canoe style kayak uh, paddling. Hence the yellow one and there's a smaller orange one there, an extendable one. But it's always good to have a spare paddle anyway. Good morning, and here we are, just about ready to get on the water. Say hello, Oliver. Hello. Oliver. How are you doing? <laughs> and uh, we're just about to go on our epic SUP slash kayak trip. Let's call it the drop stitch trip up the Derwent. Hey, I quite like that. <laughs> the drop stitch trip up the Derwent. <laughs> Hopefully no punches. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, I've definitely christened that as a female. Okay. Yeah, because I've, I've never wanted to take any male up the ooze. <laughs> It just sounds wrong, doesn't it? It, it does sound so wrong. It does a bit. I'm going to take him up the ooze. Well, let's call this one a female. Yeah, one. yeah, definitely. Don't have a name for it yet. We'll think of that over the well, weekend. This is Water we? Beast. Okay. I call my car the Beast, right? So I call that Water Beast because it's like, what a beast. What a beast. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Anyway, well, we're just about to get in the water and uh, I'll tell you when we're setting off.
right, we've been paddling for just over three hours and uh, we've pulled in, we finally managed to find a field where we could pull, it, pull in, drag some stuff out of the kayak and hopefully, well not hopefully, we are going to make some breakfast. Yeah. Six but, miles we've done so far. No, we've done six. It's just saying exactly six miles, yeah. That's pretty good going, six yeah. miles so far. Very good. So, uh, anyway, in case anybody of you don't know, Oliver here uh, is of uh, Yorkshire balloon flight fame. Here we are. And uh, I'll put a link in the uh, description. If you've never been on one of his balloon flights, you'll uh, really enjoy yourself. <laughs> He's taken me up before uh, in the in the balloon, and uh, we had a great time. <laughs> <laughs> Just about survived. <laughs> Book with um, Yorkshire balloon flights. <laughs> It'll be an adventure. It will be an adventure. But uh, yeah, we've got a bit of wood there for the twig stove, and yeah, breakfast time. Catch you in a bit. That was breakfast done and I have to say that while I've been looking for camping gear apart from how brilliant these two stoves are and the zebra billy can which I've yet to use one of the best things I have found so far is this what is it I hear you ask oh yeah it's a camping I'm trying to do this one-handed and trying to look good a camping French press made out of titanium how cool is that? Okay, we've just hit a little bit of a sticking point on the Derwent. There's this all the way across. Ollie's risking it for a biscuit and going first, which is very decent of him. Apparently he's just found two fucking dragonflies. Is that what you said? <laughs> Is it loose? You're, you're going to get skegged. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Right, I'm going to turn this camera off and uh, go and see what the score is, see if I can nudge him along. Yeah, that looks really weird straight ahead. It looks like we're actually paddling towards a cave. Even though we're not, it's just the way the light's shining, but here it goes. And just so you're aware, we're way past Moulton now. We're heading towards the A64. And keep getting there, covered in little, you're getting some sand flies and stuff. Those little thunderbugs. Yeah. Yeah. Horse flies. Horse flies. Yeah, it's because you're a nag. <laughs> Let's go.
Well, we've got set up for the night, and we actually did how, how many miles roughly? Um, I think it's 14 exactly in the end. Yeah, our respective GPSs are in disagreement with each other. Mine says a bit less than Ollie's. Ollie says about 14. I think mine says about 11 or something along those lines. 14.2 miles. 14.2. With an average speed of 2.1 miles an hour. That sounds about right. Moving time 11 hours. So that doesn't make sense with an average speed of 2.1. No, it doesn't. But that's what Strava's telling you. Strange. It is strange. Uh, we've just hit the apex where the River Rye meets the Derwent. And this, this is where we've camped up for the night. I didn't do a time lapse. To be honest with you, I was a bit shattered because we'd, uh, we'd been battling some relatively strong currents heading upstream. And I was a bit tired and I just kind of wanted to get set up. So I'll flip the camera around and I'll show you our respective setups. So basically I've set the tarp up in a basic shelter. The back ridge is actually one of my paddles. And the inside there is a DD hammock, uh, the travel hammock, uh, used as a bivy. And the shock cord is just holding the midge net off me. And then Ollie here is in a, go on, what have you got? A Soul... I've got a Soul 300. Where, where is that Vango. from? Is it Vango? It's Vango. And it's uh, a brighter green than what we hoped. So we're trying to blend into the Yeah, we're trying to landscape. blend in. I mean, we have found this nice kind of fieldy area. I mean, obviously that's the other side of the river that you're seeing now. But behind us is just open field. And it looks ungrazed. It doesn't look like it's been used for cattle or anything. So we decided to risk it for a biscuit. And, and there's certainly no cattle in the field right now, is there? So. No, there isn't. And you can just see Ollie's board, the white edge of Ollie's board, on the riverside down there. And... My kayak is just in the river, uh, well tied up. So it's in like a little eddy, so it shouldn't be going anywhere. Right, that's it for now. We're just uh, warming our tootsies. And, oh, about to get classy. Red wine in a bag. That's how you do class. Absolutely. Camping with class. Festival style. Red wine in a bag. <laughs> it's raining so I've just crawled into my frontline hammock I've got it set up as a bivy tonight with a tarp and it's absolutely chucking it down now and I have no idea whether this is going to work or not it's going to be fun and Ollie's tucked away in his little tent. It seems like it might be dry. I've only got one end of the mosquito net thing actually tied up. This is quite possibly the roughest camp think I've ever done. I'm more used to glamping than this. Are you alright in there, Ol? Yeah, mate. You okay? <laughs> yeah. It's still relatively dry. It's coming down now, isn't it? It's certainly coming down. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, but we're getting all the rain tonight by the look of it. So... Hey, what the hell? But the kayak's going to be full of water tomorrow. Because that's just a big bucket. Anyway, see you in the morning. Morning. So that's the inside of my first very rudimentary shelter. I'm only talking quietly because Holly's still asleep. It's about half past seven in the morning. And it was very rough. I don't know whether you can tell this, but it is on a hill, it's on an angle. So I managed to get myself so I had my head uphill. And that in there, as you can see, is the hammock with my coat on it. I have 
and done the shot card. I just put one shot card from there up to this post just to keep the net off my face. And it worked really well. I was toasty, lovely and warm. There's a mat underneath the in, in the in between the layers, the ground sheet layer and the bag layer. And yeah, it was warm and comfortable. So <laughs> yeah, as I say, it's very rough. But it worked. And it kept me dry because it rained in the night quite a bit. And thankfully it was coming from that direction. It's gone eight o'clock. Princess is still asleep in his tent. So much for the pitch late, leave early scenario. Anyway, <laughs> it must have needed the sleep. And I've got a mess burner going in the Lixada wood gas stove. With a bit of a shield. Getting ready for some coffee. Nice. Okay, so we're just about to set off for day two. Got everything back in the boat. I've got a lovely bite on my knee. Look at that. That's a perler, isn't it? And uh, it was hard work yesterday. We're, we've, we've had a bit of a change of plan today. And uh, Ollie's just there getting ready to launch. And we're probably going to go. The current is really strong. I'll show you. I mean, look at that. I mean, I'm in an eddy here, tucked out of the way, but you can see how fast that's shifting. And if you've seen my video where I was on the ooze, where I made the fatal mistake of misjudging the rainfall, then yeah, it's, this isn't about that. This is just the fact that the two rivers are merging in the same place, uh, just upstream. So we're gonna try and get up into one of the, uh, on, stay on the Derwent, where it merges with the Rye, go upstream for um, a mile or two, two, three, four miles maybe, uh, have a look, check it out. And then we're actually gonna capitalize on the current and head back to Molten area and camp down there so it's a, an easier paddle today because we're both a little bit sore and achy and I still haven't I'm, I'm having a love-hate relationship with this drop stitch kayak and it's great for getting all the gear in but I have found it hard to get comfortable yesterday was a real strain I'll tell you more about that later are you on Ollie on mate let's go So we're still on the Derwent, um, it's forked off now, we're just going past low marshes and there's a very strong wind behind us which is helping Carl. As you can see, he's using his sail. He was getting a bit tired anyway, so the wind is uh, a welcome bit of help. How are you doing Carl? It's like flying a kite almost. It's really working. So here we can see Carl using his um, sail for the first time at the trip. 
How's it going, Carl? Yeah, we're a bit sheltered now by this tree behind us, I think. That one there. You had a good run there. It was quite a good run. Quite a distance. Yeah. And now we're heading back again. Where the current wants to take us. This is my actual favourite spot, actually. Yeah. The, uh, if the wind's against us, then the bit that should be the nice bit ends up not being the nice bit. Yeah. It's a bit of bloody nuisance. Oh. Well, you certainly might not be able to use your sail tomorrow. But. No, that's the wrong direction. seen from the video there's quite a lot of areas like this where stuff has come down over narrow aspects of the Derwent. We've come to the worst one so far and Ollie's just trying to clear a path through by breaking branches but he's still his SUP is still dragging I'm tempted to just turn around he reckons it's clear up ahead, but it really doesn't look like it. It looks like jungle. Welcome to the Amazon. Well, that's as far as we're going up the day went. Uh, I literally couldn't get through. Oliver managed to get through on his SUP, but the the QE2 of kayaks, it was too big, too wide, and there was too much under the water root system stuff that, that was just utterly blocking the path. So I'm just waiting now on Ollie coming back through. I've managed to reverse out, and I'm just waiting for him to come back.
Polly does demonstrate excellent firewood grading skills. Good work, Mr. Webb. Thank you very much. <laughs> Look at that, graded to perfection. Take him camping any time. We might have company tonight. What? So here's tonight's setup. The tarp is a little close to the hammock. And uh, however, it will keep the wind at bay, which is coming from that direction. But it's just just the location of it. I guess sometimes you find an ideal setup, and sometimes you don't. And that is a four by three tarp, and I've had to shape that end there to make it into a three by three for the tarp for tonight. But it's uh, it's all good. And then uh, there's Ollie with his uh, little tent. Well, that's not actually Ollie. Ollie's just coming back here, armed with his baby wipes after having had a big poop. He's all done. Is 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 a bluted. Feel better now. Feel better. Much feels better. feels feels much better. Ready for dinner. And uh, the stove's going, so that he can cook his dinner. How cool is that? And there's his dinner. Classic stewed steak. Oh what no, a... you're forgetting the main part. Yorkshire puddings. Any Yorkshire puddings. <laughs> what a class act. I just can't follow that. I just can't top it. I had a salad. Not quite the same, is it? Been an interesting trip this one so far, because so far I've lost my billy can lid, I've lost the pin out my stove, and then kind of got stuck up river as well. So, <laughs> so yes, it's a trip of minor minor mishaps. I, th I, th I think we might call that the uh, the d minor mishaps up the. D oh, no, that that sounds rude. So Ollie's come up with a uh, a new food group, the Yorkshire kebab. <laughs> <laughs> Funny there was roast beef in between each one. That'd be awesome, wouldn't it? The proper yeah. Yorkshire kebab. Well, I've got some uh, stewed steak. Yeah, well, that looks like dog food. And some peas. I think it's pretty good for a camping. It is, it's it's, it's, it's good a camping high fodder. High-end fodder. High-end. For wild camping like this. Oh, I can just see this is going to really take off in the kebab shops in York. Do you know what, actually? That's a great idea, you know. It, it, it really would. It would actually, wouldn't it? Yeah. Remember the Yorkshire pudding wraps? They took it, off, didn't yeah. they? Yeah. And what if you did solid Yorkshire pudding kebab. Yorkshire pudding kebab with beef and beef potatoes. And beef and potatoes on beef it, something like that. Oh, it'd be so good. You know, roasties, beef and roasties. So you get like a kebab stick like this, you take the puddings off and dip them in your pot of you could serve it as almost like a soup. I'm making myself hungry now. Filthy. Absolutely filthy. I haven't talked about this little Thing yet uh, it's a water filter and considering we're by a river I actually decided this time that I wasn't going to bring much water with me although I did freeze some pouches uh, which are in my cool bag here which have now defrosted so I could effectively use these I bought a load of these lightweight pouches to stick wine in and other sort of like liquids I've got meths in one of them for my burner they're just so lightweight and yeah so I froze some of those to as ice packs for my cool box so I did have that water, but I wanted to actually try this filter out. And it's brilliant. So all you do is you dunk the long end of the pipe actually in there, in the in the water, and then squeeze the pump and then point that end into the bottle. So I've just done my water for tomorrow. And yeah, it's great. It just means you don't have to brick cart so much water with you when you go somewhere where there's already loads of water. Looks great with the reflections. We're currently talking bollocks <laughs> around the fire, but it's so pretty. Look at that shield one, two, three, four, five. And I actually never counted them. It is a template shield. That, that oh, well, shield that would have been less than a template. You, would, would you? you No. Nine, just no. There's good. a few people that have got six plates, but you know, amateur really. Amateur. Anything less than a template, and you're not, you're not a bushcraft. A template isn't a template. <laughs> Do you see what I did there? That was dreadful. I'll go back to drinking. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's lost that kind of look that it had earlier, where the flames seem to be zipping around the the thing. But it's just because it's dark now. Let's actually pan up. Look at that sky. Oh, actually, that's coming out really good. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, that's great. And that light in the distance is a farmhouse on the left-hand side there. I keep looking at that one straight ahead centre screen now. That you're looking at and I'm not sure it's twinkling it's not 
actually twinkling. It's behind some trees, and there's actually two of them, one left and one mm. right. And it, I keep thinking it's a car driving towards us, but it's not. Do you think it's a house on a hill or something? It or? could be. But then there's there's a few more lights. But if you look at that one, I'm going to point to it with a stick. Pointy stick. I love the fact that you can just see one light on yeah. that house there. In that whole farmhouse, Yeah. there's that one left-hand side window that's lit up. And and I love that. That lit up. Did you notice when that lit up? It lit up early. Did you see that bat? It just flew straight in front of I've the lens. I've seen a few, but yeah. Um, that lit up early doors mm. and before it got dark. And it's, you know, that's the one that's just sort of gradually got brighter and brighter as it that, got darker and darker. That's the, the heart of the home, I'm guessing. That's the farmhouse. Yeah. Yeah, that'd that be the kitchen. That must be... Kitchen diner. The kitchen diner, or maybe the living room. Kitchen lounge, yeah, something along those kitchen lines. Kitchen lounge, yeah. But yeah, it's a beautiful skyline tonight. Stunning. Go on then, give me some clouds, Ol. In case you're not aware, viewers, Ollie's a balloon man. He's the balloon boy. And he knows all about clouds and stuff because he has to. Meteorological... Meteorol too many... Meteorological stuff. Go on. Yeah, so... Right. They look these clouds here. Yeah. Hey, the stick works, doesn't it? It does. It points I feel like yeah, I'm yeah. doing like a kind of presentation in school or something. <laughs> these clouds here look at the moment like ventricular clouds, which is what you get around mountains quite often when it's very windy and or right. high up uh, altitude. And they kind of look like UFOs, they're very flat and yeah. kind of but I think they're just serious oh, sorry, serious clouds. That right. Have, that, that have, uh, so they're not serious clouds. They're not. They they were <laughs> earlier on today. <laughs> yeah, they were earlier. There yeah. was a few of these that were quite serious earlier yeah. on today when it was thermic and they were like bubbling up. Yeah. But they've flattened off now because it's the evening, and so, it looks to me like they're serious clouds that are just flat and just pretty calm. The atmosphere is very stable. The wind's dropped. Yeah, it has. Um, and you can usually, when the wind drops out, if you look at the, the sky and the clouds that have been around in the day, quite often you see them flattening out. And that's what's happened, I think, to these clouds here. So what's... I'm going to just use my finger in the way. What's this area here, right? So the big grey area there. Yeah. That's That cloud's much higher. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure what it is. I don't know if you pan to, if you can pan up to the sky. So you can see they're, alto, kind of... they're alto cumulus clouds that right. are really high up, but I don't know if... They don't really come in through very well on this. But where you can see, it's kind of like... kind of looks like candy... Like candy floss or, yeah. or like little cotton buds. They're really high clouds. Right. Um, usually a sign. You usually see them clouds when it's kind of settled, calm conditions. Usually during high pressure. Right, When okay. there's high pressure around. Um, before they drop to become rain clouds before, somewhere. Yeah. I mean, it'd never rain from that height. No. But no, it's, it'd, it'd be freezing if it came from that it'd height. It'd be freezing and then it'd, yeah. But... Yeah, I don't know. I can't really say much more. I've not actually looked at the forecast to say what's happening now. But that, that cloud that you mentioned, that line of cloud that you can yeah. see there is yeah. there. That's high. That's very high. This is cloud. high, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Cool stuff. Well, I hope you learned something. Mm. I did. It's been quite fascinating chatting with Ollie about clouds and stuff this weekend. Hey, you see this bird out hunting? Is that an owl? You see that? <gasps> you got it. That's yeah, owl, can it? you see that flying that, across? No, hang on. What yeah, it's flying level. It is an owl. Wow. Unfortunately, you wouldn't have seen much of that because it was very small on the screen. Um, anyway, yeah, so the plan is tomorrow is to get up relatively early. Uh, we're setting off, the, the aim is to set off before nine because we've got about 12 miles to do. Well, 12 miles according to mine, 17 according to all his uh, sat navy stuff, uh, GPS stuff. So we'll see, but yeah, we've got to, it should be good because we're actually rowing downstream, paddling downstream, so it should be a bit easier, hopefully. And I will just leave you with this beautiful flame licking around my feet. Does life get any better? Good morning, campers. Beautiful morning out here in uh, in the field, and I just thought I'd have a quick check and make sure that the uh, the crafts were still there where we left them. Slept right, uh, slept quite well in the hammock. I think I fell asleep about midnight. Woke up about half past three, four o'clock time, and then I've just been dozing since then. 
and there was a little bit of rain in the night which is drying out now it's, it's really bright now as you can see so time for some coffee and time for them then it'll be the epic trek back we've got about 12 miles to do today but thankfully it's uh, downstream and if the wind stays kind it'll be quite a it'll be a nice route nice trip see you in a bit this is where we were pitched last night and somewhere around here although you can't see where we had a big fire pit leave no trace
Well, we've uh, got back and got everything kind of emptied and Ollie's managed to wash his board in the... Yeah, it's pretty clean. The Derwent. And just in case, I'm just going to let this dry out a little bit, get some of the mud in there dry out before I pack it away. And that's it, the end of an epic adventure. Just in case you were wondering what you heard, dog in the 